In this video I want to show you the process of how I turn my own handwriting into a font and how you can do the same. To get started, look at inspiration from creators, designers you admire and font websites. At first you might think, why not just download a font that's already out there? That's what I thought as well, but I quickly realized that most of them weren't in my preferred style. You might find some cool ones, but often they're either way too expensive to license or they're missing details you want. That's why it helps to pull inspiration from mixed sources instead of just one. Check Pinterest, flip through books, look at designers work and figure out what do you like and why. For the actual process, I used mainly three things. First, grab an iPad or a tablet where you can literally hand draw your characters. The benefit is that your work is already digital. Of course you could also use paper and markers too, but then you would need to scan it. On the iPad I used Procreate because it's super easy and then later I moved everything into Illustrator since you need a program that can create vectors. You can use an Illustrator extension like Fontmaker. It's a one-time purchase I believe, it's really handy and it's by the way not sponsored. But you don't have to use it, there are also free websites where you can drag and drop your files to create a font. When you're drawing in Procreate you might realize the pre installed brushes don't match the vibe you're going for. In that case, I headed to Gumroad, which is like a digital workshop where people share brushes and tools and other digital goodies. That's where I found a free brush pack that I really like. One of them called The Elder had a subtle texture I really enjoyed and decided to go with. Next comes the fun but time consuming part. You will want to draw all the characters, the full alphabet and any special symbols you need. Put each letter on its own layer so you don't accidentally lose a good version. Then organize them into bundles. One sheet for uppercase, one for lowercase and as many as you want for special characters. If you want different styles like regular and bold, create both versions while you edit. This can be a lot of work, especially for special characters, but that's where the font gets very versatile. Nothing worse than finding a cool font and realizing it doesn't even support simple marks like a question mark. You can also create unique extras like bubbles or arrows, which can make your font stand out and can come in really handy, which I will show you in a second. Once you've done, export the letters as JPEGs and send them over to your laptop. Now open Illustrator and drag in your images. Use the image trace function to convert them from JPEGs into vectors. Be sure to enable ignore white so the background disappears. Use the sliders to adjust threshold and other options to find the perfect balance for your font and turn on auto grouping if you like. Then click expand to officially turn the images into vectors. I also recommend smoothing it very slightly. Around 5% worked great for me. That way the edges can clean up a bit without losing the hand drawn feel. After ungrouping delete any stray marks or leftover bits. Since vectors are math based instead of pixel based, smoothing helps make them look a bit cleaner. Repeat that process for all your characters. To speed things up however, you can use your trace settings as a preset. Just set it once, save it and reuse it instead of starting over from scratch every single time. After vectorizing, it's time to set up alignment lines. The baseline, cap height and the middle line. Even if you're not a typography expert, like I am actually, this step is important. For reference, you can use the letter H to determine the top and bottom and the letter X for the middle. Then place each character according to these guides so everything looks consistent. Next, install the plugin and open it. You can go into Illustrator, go to Windows, Extensions and then Font Self Maker. It's the plugin I recommend, but you can use any method that you want. You can create a new font by dragging in all 26 uppercase letters. Make sure they're grouped individually, not all together. The plugin usually assigns letters automatically, but if some spacing isn't correct yet, you can just delete the character, adjust it manually, and then just drag it in again and assign the new character. Then hit install. This installs the font only in Illustrator, not on your entire computer. This helps to keep things tidy while you're still adjusting things. Give your font the name and test it by typing out a sample text. If you don't like something, just tweak it, reinstall, and it will update right away. Next, bring in your special characters. This step is a bit more tedious since you need to drag and drop each one and manually assign them. A good tip is to use ChatGPT or Wikipedia to quickly find the symbols you want. Then copy and paste them into the plugin. Repeat the same process if you want the bold version as well. To keep your style organized, go into font info and label them properly. Regular, bold, etc. Bold usually works great for headlines while regular is better for paragraphs. There's also a smart button that automatically adjusts kerning, which is the spacing between letters. This makes your font look more professional without much effort. Finally, don't forget the extra special characters. This is where you can add personality and versatility. For example, instead of searching for PNG errors or highlights every time, you can make them part of your font. Just assign symbols to letters and numbers. Because if you want to use an error in your design, you can just type in an A and select a specific style and you would create it right away. You can use the plus and minus to adjust the scaling if it's too big or too small inside the extension. To keep things organized, I labeled this specific style as decoration in the font info. Once everything is done, regular, bold and decoration, save your font 
install them on your computer and they will appear grouped together as one font family with different styles. After that I created some mockups to see how my font looks in action. I named mine offcut because I felt like it really conveyed this kind of rough hand drawn vibe. It's also now available on Gumroad for a few bucks. So if you want to support me, that's where you can check it out and leave a review. In the end, you will have a font with multiple styles and unique symbols. Hopefully this guide gave you some inspiration and showed you how to create your own font. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you end up using my font, I'll encourage you to tag me. I'd love to see what you make. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.